Ashish Bhandari joins us, Managing Director with Thermax. Let's take a conversation forward with Mr. Bhandari. Ashish, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Ashish, as we look into 2022, after a good and encouraging 2021, how are things looking, both for the traditional business of Thermax and the new energy business or the new initiatives of Thermax? Uh, thank you very much and a very, very happy new year to all your viewers as well. Um, I think uh, last year, relative to most of our expectations, uh, the Indian economy rebounded faster. Um, and this was, as I've said before, a broad-based recovery with multiple sectors coming into play. We see a little bit of that strength uh, continuing into uh, this new year as well, uh, but with increased strength in some of our bigger verticals, especially in uh, steel and cement and uh, distilleries, everything relating to infrastructure is continuing to see momentum. Remains to be seen what the next wave will do. In terms of challenges to the business, the single biggest challenge by far is commodity prices um, and managing uh, the impact of uh, commodity inflation across our book. Uh, second challenge, which will emerge uh, pretty quickly, I think, is just talent overall. Uh, and especially talent in many of the new energy areas because uh, uh, attrition has started to go up uh, across India Inc. And, and many companies that are looking for new talent in these segments are seeing challenges, including Thermax. How large do you think the new energy business of Thermax could be in potentially two to three years? That is what markets are excited about. Your okay. endeavor to move into... Uh, you know, clean fuels, get into equipment, which essentially is going to be targeting towards pollution control. Is that at a drawing stage right now? Or those businesses, you're confident that you would be able to scale them up immensely? It's a mix of uh, both. Many of our existing uh, capabilities in the new energy sector, especially around waste heat recovery, biomass, um, taking um, everything on the cooling side from um, water, some of the new solutions around zero liquid discharge, many of them are already well established and continuing to grow. Where we think uh, the market will go in the future, especially around the hydrogen economy, there it remains to be seen how big the sector will be in three years. But to um, but to most companies in this space, that's a that's a bet that you have to make because uh, hydrogen will be a big part of uh, India's energy story sooner or later. Whether some of the policy decisions and the projects come into play and start to make a big difference in the next two years remains to be seen. But if you look at a five to ten and ten year horizon, we have to be prepared for that, and that's the direction for Thermax as well. Are coming back, uh, are these, are these, you know, the business of Thermax essentially is that it caters to short duration capex. So where is the growth coming from? Is it steel, cement? Uh, where is growth coming from? I, in, in our uh, period, I think if I look at the top six segments and they are all 10%, 10%, 10% of Thermax right now, uh, it's a mix of everything. It looks like a snapshot of uh, industrial uh, base of India. Yeah, and we have uh, uh, pharma and chemicals, uh, food, pharmaceuticals, uh, and then of course you have the uh, the bigger sectors which are cement, steel, and uh, refining and petrochemical. So, so the entire spectrum right now is established. I would go actually a step further to say that Thermax also has about. Uh, 120 plus distributors all across India and these distributors give us insight into what's happening in in textiles in plywood in uh, construction a little bit uh, tires uh, glove manufacturing and it has been interesting that it changes from month to month but across all sectors we have seen recovery and in most cases the recovery is is beyond what we had uh, uh, so it's gone beyond pre-COVID as well, which has been which has been good. I think it's not just uh, Thermax. I think the overall industrial production in India across multiple segments, and we see that in how exports are performing, how the overall uh, PMIs have been performing, is is quite a hard thing to say.
Right. Ashish also wanted to understand how the foreign subsidiaries are panning out and this is coming from curiosity because of the spike in some of the western com countries, especially the Europe, uh, uh, you know, region. Uh, when it comes to Europe, US, Indonesia, what signs are you picking up on the impact of uh, COVID-19 spike on your businesses? I think last year we were impacted a fair bit, especially in Europe and in Southeast Asia. Our Europe, our US business, where we were a little bit better entrenched, continued to be good. And if anything, our exports into the US market actually increased last year. Um, this year, we come into this new calendar year with uh, with higher expectations because last year, a couple of our international subsidiaries, especially Southeast Asia and our European subsidiary, where we do manufacturing, did not do as well as we expected. And especially in Southeast Asia, they were a, it was a long gestation period. And many of our in, intra-country travel, etc., was also limited. Um, this year, we come in with a higher opportunity pipeline and expectation that projects will move faster. Um, and in Europe in particular, with the green energy move, we are seeing that uh, certain new kinds of projects, including electric boiler deals, etc., are getting um, are faster into the discussion mode. That said, I would say both of these businesses for us are something we are watching very closely, working on them. In the short windows we had last year, uh, we could get some amount of travel done, um, achieve a bit of progress. But uh, but what uh, this new wave will bring around, and certainly the new set of restrictions, won't help. So I would say cautiously optimistic, uh, but we need to deliver on growth in these businesses before we can translate that optimism into reality. Sure. You know, also wanted to get a sense on what's happening with other industries or sectors per se. A lot of uh, CapEx, for instance, has been announced by cement as well as steel players. Um, you know, when it comes to other businesses, uh, say food, pharmaceuticals, short cycle, etc. Where is it that you see or sense material opportunity and growth? I think, um, see, so far... What we have seen, especially in, in steel and cement, has been a um, lot of work on waste heat recovery. Um, it could be, you know, just working cocoa and gas and uh, blast furnace gas uh, optimization, um, secondary and tertiary uh, uh, waste and recycling that back. So they have been very active from a CapEx perspective, but they have been primarily brownfield opportunities. Major CapEx expansions, especially in steel, have been announced, but the impact of them um, on the ground in terms of new buys, whether it be in water, whether it be in heat or any of the other segments, is yet to be seen. So, so we actually are looking forward to some of those expansions coming into play also expansions from a lot of the PLI investments that are expected um, any even like a textile park or a big semiconductor plant many of these things require big amounts of water related solutions uh, heat and steam related solutions so they're a good place for thermax i would say the big capex impact of the big capex decisions is yet to be seen um, you can take that with a bit of uh, optimism that as some of those uh, come into play some of this progress that we have seen can continue on. Where we see decisions starting to happen is on petrochemical, where especially the government companies, um, IOCL, um, HPCL, uh, EIL, many of them that had uh, put many of those projects that were work in progress, but because of COVID, the decision making was slow. They have started moving and they have been giving us orders, big uh, big ticket orders uh, this last quarter and foreseeably for the next couple of quarters. Hi, Ashish. Good morning. This is Nantara. So, you know, you've told uh, Nikunj right now at the start of the interview how hydrogen is going to play a big role, the biomass orders, all of that. I've also read how the order book is, you know, 70 30, uh, 70 for new energy, 30% as far as the fossil fuels go. 
But tell us a little bit about what's been happening, whether it's rising input costs of raw materials, rising prices of freight. Sir. How is all of that impacting Thermax? It had turned out to be the overarching theme for the last earnings season. And it, I think it will continue to be um, in the near future as well, because the more we prepare for some of the commodity price increases, it feels like at least the last quarter, uh, they continue to um, continue to go up. Um, I think we finally have some little bit of stability, but that remains to be seen because um, I felt exactly the same three months ago and, and prices continue to go up even in that environment. And even right now, as we speak, at least uh, oil is showing tendencies to um, to start crossing that uh, $30, $80 per um, $80 barrier, barrier for WTI and Brent and continuing to go up as well. And if that happens, a lot of these subsidiary and, and intermediate uh, petrochemical commodities that end up being raw materials for our chemicals business, as an example, they will all start to go up. So I think the whole commodity price increase cycle, portions of it we have been able to manage. The higher volume has given us some protection. We have had a lot of investments in productivity, in digital, in doing more with uh, with existing resources but beyond a point uh, the impact of commodity prices will be felt in the uh, felt in the bottom line of the businesses and Anthar, i think we're in the earning season i think we finished our quarter so i can't share uh, specifics um, our books are being closed as we speak so so you'll have to wait a month for for seeing the numbers actually Oh, yes, I do take that. I know you can't get into specifics. I was just asking the theme if it's going to continue and uh, right. how folks like you are grappling with that, the rising input costs, uh, freight prices also going up. Uh, Ashish, it's always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for joining us live today on The Market. Thank you very much. Thanks to all your viewers as well. We're going to take a short commercial break.